live. Hey. Serena fucking Kerrigan. How are we? Thank you so much for, for coming on, first of all. All the way to Park Slope. Where are you acting like this is Uganda? Like this is <laughs> right across the river. No, actually, when I was born in Mount Sinai in Manhattan, uh, my parents lived in Park Slope. So I do feel a connection here. I feel some good energy. And you were, well, you also, you just told me where you were conceived as well. Oh, yeah, you, you knew that. <laughs> Conceived in the West Village. Right. Grew right. up in the Upper West Side. So we're city kids. We are city kids. You know, we actually have a lot in common. I would love to know. No, <laughs> don't worry, I'll tell you. <laughs> Both born and raised in New York, although I'm sure that you think that Brooklyn is not New York. It's absolutely New York. Okay, so then both only children. Oh, God. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> Honestly, now, yeah. <laughs> and... I think we both overuse the word fuck. Or not, maybe not overuse. We use it the right amount. Exactly. And it just makes people uncomfortable. Does it? You've noticed that it makes people uncomfortable? I think now people have kind of gotten used to it. But yeah, in the beginning when I was like, I'm starting to fucking care again. It just like, didn't just rub people right in the eye. eye. Yeah. No, I like that for you. Thanks. So I told you a few seconds ago. Is there a little tidbit, a little story, a little something the world doesn't know about you since you're out there? <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? I mean that in the best way. Mm-hmm. I swear. No, I know, because you are too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, you know, I've, um, I've I've shared a lot on the internet, but for whatever reason, the first thing that came up in my head was when I was 16. I really wanted to be a filmmaker. I still do. I am one, essentially. Um, but I went to USC film school over the summer, a seven-week intensive film program. I was the youngest in the program. I had no car. There was no Uber couldn't drive it was crazy I had to make a film permits everything I made a short film it was actually terrible but there was someone in my program and he was 25 and I was 16 and I was like Serena we gotta make a movie somehow <laughs> 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 no the movie wasn't a porno but uh we started dating and my parents like I was in LA my parents were in New York and they're like what are you doing what's going on and like I dated this guy and in the moment it, it what no 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 go ahead yeah let me do my head bed so like it sounds insane when I say it now, but like back then it just didn't feel that weird. And my parents were like, obviously like in the beginning, they were like literally what the fuck. And then they're like, well, they met him and they're like, we like him. And as long as he treats you like great, then that's fine with us. And he did. He, but now that when I think about it, a 25 year old dating a 16 year old, like it just doesn't hit, you know? <laughs> His hair was also down to here. No, <laughs> no, that's- And that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Yeah, like I feel <laughs> respect to your parents for not freaking out. Yeah. Because I feel like some would. Yeah. There's, you know, just from the legality standpoint of it and. No, 16, it's legal. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> good. He's not going to jail. Um, how long do you guys stay for? Because I think 16 in the state of New York, you can have sex. Like, I, I'm not even kidding. But yeah, no, we dated for like a year, but I remember a I brought it. A year? Him, yeah. Or like a, yeah. Oh, this no, wasn't like, like a small, like, ah, like, uh, like. No, I've actually blocked it out of my memory, which is why I've never mentioned it on any other podcast or show. And what's this young or old fellow doing now? I have literally no idea. He's We're, we've, we've, we've parted ways, but he was really nice. And then, I, but I remember when I brought him to like a high school party, my friends were like, are you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. I think it just, it showed that I probably need a partner that is very mature. What do you think he was thinking at the time when he was at the high school party? I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about his mental health, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was, it didn't feel that weird. You want good content? Go rekindle with him. A hundred percent He's probably like, fit. he's probably like, old with kids, this is older thing. with kids. I think that's really kind. Uh, I don't <laughs> I really don't know. This is the thing about me. When I'm done with you, like I'm done. No, I describe it because I'm I'm similar, but I'm curious to see how that works. I just in your mind. did. I dated a 25 year old when I was 16, and I've never heard from him again. Like that's it. But how do you block the individual out when when you say I'm done? Like, are they dead to you? Like, if they're someone does you dirty and they're sitting right here, you don't look at them. Is it? Oh, oh, <laughs> no one's done me really dirty like that. Thank God, there's yeah. one here. <laughs> No, I just feel like when I, I'm once I'm really over it, like the chapter's over, it's done. Like on to the next plot point. How right. do you know how do you know when something's truly done? It's the gut feeling. Yeah, but Okay. Why don't you share your story about you No, I don't really done? 
I don't know. I, that's why I'm curious because I think for me, I struggle with knowing exactly. You, I'm an eternal optimist, so I'm like, oh, maybe mm, it's a bad idea. Don't I, let him back in. Yeah, no. It's done. It's done. Like your ex is your ex for a reason. You know, it's like spoiled milk. Like once you don't put it back into the fridge and expect it to be fresh again. That's a fair point. Um, so for you, that's exactly how I view my exes. Like they just start to stink, and I just don't want them back. They'll never get fresh again. <laughs> Damn, they're dead to you. They're rotten. They're rotten. <laughs> <laughs> dead. It feels harsh. They're just they they rotted. How many have come crying back to you? What percentage? I mean, a hundred. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. I, not really. Like it's it, it's like a mutual decision. It's a mutual parting. I'm a lot, so I feel like you can either handle it or you can't. Do you? Okay. I would argue that. <laughs> what do you think I was going to say? No, I don't know, but I'm curious. Well, I think that because you, at least on the outside, ha have your shit together. In a lot of ways, I think for someone who has their shit together, that's not handling a lot. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know what I'm saying. So you're talking about yourself. No, I'm saying about, I'm no, saying No, 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 but you. I'm saying for you, like you have your shit together too. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. Okay, fine. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, I think like you, with the right matched partner, you're the perfect amount. That was really wait, sweet. That was, <laughs> wait, that was like the nicest thing wait. I've said in a long time. <laughs> Whoa, are you hitting on me? No. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Serena. Of course. We have to this is professional. professional. <sighs> um, but do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, you, I don't think you've been listening. No, no, I was totally listening. Are you kidding me? I was repeating it in my head. Um, yes, I agree with you. Apparently, a lot of people don't have their shit together, though. It's it's taken for granted, I think, people that have their shit together. When you... When you measure if someone has their shit together as a potential partner in that sense what are you specifically looking for that they're doing what they love that okay. to me is like or they're on track to doing what they love that to me is really the difference like i've been on a lot of dates with guys that are like i fucking hate my job or ugh, and like i just don't i i, I that's a very difficult thing for me to relate to like i don't care what you love right. doing i mean hopefully it's like not golf <laughs> but um <laughs> Never gonna no. date a golfer ever. Uh, but but that being said, I take that, no, nah, I'm probably not gonna date a golfer, but I do think I don't have to like what they do. It's not what I do, but I that's what I value. It's like you are genuinely passionate about what you do every single day. I mean, it's literally all your time that we're working. Does it matter to you if they're successful or, or not at it? I think I mean, it's that they're no, not yet, but I think they it's the, being on track. But I think that if you're really passionate and dedicated to your craft you'll get there yeah i think what so i'm gonna compliment you again what i really like about your brand is i think that the the lessons or the the message that you're getting across i think is so great for both men and women. And I think that that's an underrated part about what people might not say about your brand is that people might think from the outside, oh, it's like a confident woman inspiring other confident women. But I think like all of your advice is sound for men too. And I hope that if men are listening right now, that they do a better job of listening to you in that sense. Because I think the, the points about confidence, and I've been listening to a lot of your appearances on different shows. You can ask Brandon, I was watching, which one was that? Oh yeah, I was watching you on the vile files earlier. Um, I think our, for lack of a better word, like I think men should take notes as well. Okay, so what resonated with you? I think the idea that confidence is not, um, that you can have, I guess, vulnerable moments while being confident. Mm -hmm. And I think that for you, I imagine, like when you, sh do you try to actively show that to fans or people that support you that, yes, I'm the queen of confidence, but yes, I do go through my struggles. So that's been something I've been grappling with, not just online, but like also in my dating life. Because I think that I really am actually really soft and like fluffy in the inside. At least that's what a guy told me recently. <laughs> no, How'd that make you feel? It made me feel seen because I am, mm -hmm. but because I'm so soft and like sensitive, I had to like build a shell. Like I had to create SFK to survive because if not, I was too sensitive and, and then I would 
be too receptive to potential thoughts about me or criticism. Like it was just too difficult to operate. So I had to create something. But I sometimes feel like maybe I like overdid it or like I need to learn. What I'm working on now is like like letting the guard down, like crawling out of the shell. Like if I was a little turtle. Do you feel like when you're putting out content, it's equally for, for men and women? I don't really think that I have a designate. I mean, it's honestly when I make content, it's for myself. It's like, what would I want to watch? What, a, what reminder do I need? And so whoever picks up on that, that's great. You, you posted a story, I think, last night about being in kind of like a creative rut. Wow, you do be stalking. Mm. I love that. I mean, I love that you're doing I research. Gotta, I got to do my homework. Of course. You think I'm not going to come prepared? You'd be surprised. <laughs> well, that's a whole other subject. Um, how did you, why, why a creative rut right now? I just think there's this expectation that you have to be constantly creating every single day. And I think no other like creative industry other than social media is like that. Like artists go on tour and then they write an album and, and they take time to really dedicate to their craft. I think the constant instant gratification and an expectation that you have to have virality, it's just exhausting. What do you, what is mostly your creative process in general? Um, go on a date and then think about what I've learned from that and then throw it online. But I'm also kind of fatigued about my date, like dating content too. I don't really know. I'm in a period of transition. This is your era? The transition era? The Serenaissance. Mm. Serenaissance. <laughs> I had to brand it. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Do you feel like you, when you first, I guess, started SFK, the mentality was, let me fake it till I make it? I don't like that because it's not fake. Like you were born with confidence. Like that's just, it was just ingrained in you. You just like, it's Tap like, it. it's like you get infected mm -hmm. with just societal pressures, some comment, some dick sat at camp. And I'm sorry, I was just thinking about that kid. Um, I wonder where he is now, <laughs> probably watching this. Uh, <laughs> no, but like you just get infected. So it's about, that moment was about like, healing myself and also yes tapping into it having that conversation being like you're a fucking baddie do you think everyone is innately born with confidence a hundred percent so then how for those who feel like they've listened to you but they still can't tap into it um what's how many people are you that's zero percent <laughs> zero percent <laughs> no i mean it's like it's a bustle that you have to flex but it's like I also feel like I'm still learning about confidence. Like I think confidence is me like not turning on SFK, which is very hard to do. When does when is F when is SFK off? Not right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, when? When I feel safe. You know, and I think that's so that, you feel safe. No, I, no I, right. I, 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 there's cameras in here, you know? So I feel like I have to be on. But I think it's like I'll, I'll, work, I'll work on feeling safe in this room. It's a safe space. <sighs> it does kind of feel breaths. safe in here. We're in Brooklyn. We're in Brooklyn. Park Slope. Park Slope. We still live here. <laughs> really? <laughs> when I was one. Oh, yeah. Like what? straight from the hospital. Do you, do oh, you? no. I don't remember the address. Um, imagine if it was like in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Safety. It's just like I have to say, okay, here I'll be a vulnerable. I have such an easier time being vulnerable with women and like being that soft person. I think it's just like for whatever reason with my upbringing and, you know, I'm an only child too, as you know. So like I didn't have a lot of like male interaction growing up. Like I'm just significantly closer to the women in my family. So I find that like with men sometimes is when like that guard goes up. So then it just takes time. Do you think that that, does it feel like a sign of weakness if you're vulnerable with, with a man? I think it's just fear. It's fear of what? Of Wow, Jesus, we're getting really deep here. We're only 15 minutes in. <laughs> oh, damn it, how long is this? Um, <laughs> I think it's not a sign of weakness at all, at all. I think it's more like what the fear is, if I am who I am, will they love me? Mm. And so if I'm Serena fucking Kerrigan, I'm good. I don't give a fuck if you love me because I love myself. But so then how, but then what I'm curious about is like in that brain of yours, because you just you just threw out two different sides of the spectrum, right? 
which I think show your your humanity, mm -hmm. right? Where you can be that bad bitch, serene SFK, but then also like, you know, have that fear of what if they don't like me for who I am? And in a lot of ways, I appreciate you even, well, A, opening up to, to wow. me about that, but yeah. also I think that that shows for a lot of people out there that might feel confident to know that it's okay to also feel what you're just described. Of course. I mean, I think every human being wants to be loved and like no matter how confident you are, like you still desire that and have that fear. Maybe maybe not everyone, but at least I think a lot of people I know, we have that fear of abandonment or if we, that if they see the real, if that we're actually exposed and show who we are, then they won't love us. So what I did was I just built some kind of self-defense mechanism and just figured out how to monetize it and brand it. But like <laughs> what I did wasn't like rocket science. Like I just was like, I'm not feeling good about myself. So I'm just gonna create this exterior so that way nobody knows. And if someone doesn't like me, well, I'm just the character anyway. When did you when did you kind of create this? I mean, I know, but for the people that, that yeah. don't, when did this SFK come to life? It was when I was a freshman at Duke and everyone was hot and smart. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and like all my friends were making out with the lacrosse players that are very misogynistic, but they were hot. And I was like, why am I invisible? And I just was feeling so shitty. And I was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta do something here. We gotta change it. We have this opportunity. It's like this one moment where I'm new. No one knows me. Like, how can I reinvent myself? What were the options? It was just like, I'm Serena fucking Kerrigan. Like there was not even, what do you mean? What were the options? Like, like was I going through different personas? Yeah, like, like candy, <laughs> <laughs> different stripper names. No, like, like, no, like, <laughs> no, it was, no it. like, was it like, I'm just going to create this crazy bad bitch persona. I'm going to try to befriend these people or like, what, like how, what was oh. the strategizing process? It was, was really, I wish like it, it, you woke up one morning, you're like, I'm SFK. It's really, it was just that simple. No, really. Like I didn't think I had this whole, it took a lot of time for me to like realize why I did it, what it did for me. But in the moment it was just like, yeah, I changed my name legally when I was 18. And everyone's like, really? And I was like, yeah, you got into Duke? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? But they believed me. And it just like, it just, it worked. And what, what was your, what were your friends' reactions from people that knew you prior to this oh, altering? Hated it. Parents hated it. I mean, I mean, I took it very far. Like I wrote it on my resume. Like I like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> I did not let go of this. In fact, just last week, I deleted fucking from my Instagram bio. No, I why? Did. Yeah, wow, this podcast is so major. This is, you got, you got me at a good time. Because I was watching an interview with Kevin Hart and um, on Logan Paul's podcast. And they were like, Logan was like, why, when did you become this like funny black comedian that you see in every movie to Kevin fucking Hart? Like, what was that jump? And he was like, I remember the exact moment. I was preparing my whole life for it. And then he was also saying though that he like kind of, he started to appeal more and make a conscious effort to appeal to like families and children, which obviously my content is not. But I think that the thing about the fucking is like, I'm starting to feel like I no longer need it as that mm. entry point. And also people know me as us, okay? Like that's never gonna go away. But I find that what it does and similarly to what the persona does in general, what it did was it's like, rejecting before I get rejected. Like, fuck you, I'm straight to fucking care again. So it's like, if I take it out, will it make the barrier to entry to my content to me mm. like less high? Like, will it be more open? Because people really don't like that word. Really? It's like one yes. of my favorite. Obviously, but like, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I built a whole brand off of it. I love it. But I just think like, it's, it's, a, it's a curse word. And we're in a puritanical society, so like. But if anything, I would argue, if I could play. Okay, I'm gonna, put it, I'm gonna put it back up. Yeah. this episode, I feel like. <laughs> if I, I would argue that the the boldness of it and the obviously the brand. That's what I think people love. Right. Because they're like, I think. People just they want to gravitate towards a character mm -hmm. that feels kind of like them, kind of not like them. They want to be a little bit more like them, but bold as fuck, right? People, I, that's just my opinion. And I feel like one of the reasons why, and I think there's one show that you were talking about, your loyal fan base and like they they fucking love you. Yeah, right. and I love them. I think it's for that reason is because they relate to 
the boldness, the fucking, the... Yeah. And so I don't know, that's... So here's here's what I'll respond to you, which is, that's not fucking leaving, first of all. Like, that's not going to go away because they just take the fucking out um, of the name. But I think also I'm evolving. Mm-hmm. Like, I was SFK for 10 years. And, like, we just talked about it. It's like, I feel like confidence is truly being like, I don't need to be SFK all the time. Yeah. It's just the next step. It's the next era. So so the next era, so this is the transition era, but what's like the transition era going into? I don't know. We're in the transition. I'll let you know. But, but what do we, just what, what do we, what do we, <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we hope it is? I don't know. I, I feel I'm really in a transition. Like I feel, it's, I'm also in my Saturn return. I don't like, are you, what is, what, what sign are you? Aquarius. Oh, nice. Are you compatible or no? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. Okay. Mm. Uh, Are you on uh, what's the what's the app? The pattern. The what's that app that, that CoStar? T- yeah. CoStar sucks. The pattern. Oh, it's fake. It's the best one. No. Yeah. Oh shit. I should. I really said that with so much gravitas. Mm. Sorry. Love CoStar. They're, Slay. <laughs> they're not sponsoring you ever. <laughs> they're not. I don't love CoStar. I love the pattern. So okay. we'll, we'll okay, get we'll you. Do it after. We'll get you downloaded after. But anyway, I'm going through my Saturn return, which is just like this really uh, transformational moment of my life where I'm questioning everything, including my career. Like. I'm writing a movie right now. I really want to be a filmmaker. Like, that's really what I want to do. But then I got caught in, like, the instant gratification of, like, social media. And then I want to be SFK. And then, but I want to be Serena. Like, there's a lot of dualities. There's a lot going on here. So I'm just riding the motherfucking wave. So I don't know what the next iteration of me is going to look like. But even having this conversation, I never used to do. Ever. I never used to to be like, yeah, there's, like, there's Serena too. Like, I would never. But see, that's, in my opinion, that's the true confidence. Right. Exactly. So because somebody who wouldn't be confident would not be able to say that. Right. So for the last ten years, I guess it wasn't confident. <laughs> so she's lying. She's been really, lying she's the whole lying. time. Totally lying. Hey, no, just evolving. <laughs> do you ever think? Do you ever think like backwards to now? Like, do you think when I'm sixty, I want to be X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. Of course. You write your plot. What is it? What is a six? What is a six-year-old? Sixty-year-old. Okay, Serena I don't know. Kerrigan. Can we start with like? Well, I guess I'm 30 next year. Oh my god. Uh, I mean, I just know. I I just I know I'm gonna win an Oscar. Like I see it. No, you are. I'm being dead ass too. Yeah. Why are you smiling? Because it's just like look, duh. Into, look into that camera and say that you're gonna win an Oscar and tell me the year too. The year? I so I don't or do that. Or buy. I don't. I don't do that. Okay. I mean, I hope it's like soon. <laughs> I'm still really hot, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna win a fucking Oscar, and I'm gonna go to the Met Gala and be best dressed. I heard Nick, Nick Vile had no idea what, what was going on with the Met Gala. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like, oh, where? What did he say? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I blacked that one out. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> I noticed that as well. Um, <laughs> anywho, not to violate on Nick. No, we love Seems him. like a nice guy. No, he's super nice. Um, What else? What other goals? I mean. No, no, no. Not even just goals. What do you want life to look like? What do I want life to look like? Oh my God, you're really like, do you do this with every guest? Put them on the spot like this? No, just me? Okay. Um, what do I want life to look like? I mean, I want to be a mom. I will be a mom. Um, I will have a house in the Hamptons. Oh, that's important to you. It was in high school. We'll, well see that's that clearly still important. <laughs> now it's the first thing you said, like. <laughs> yeah. No, I just own it. Yeah. No, I, I, I want to, Okay, sorry. Let me preface by saying, like, I didn't grow up with, like, a vacation home growing up. And I feel like New York is just, like, obviously the best city in the world. Wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously. Raising my case here. But I feel like you need, an, you need like, an escape. Like, mm-hmm. I love nature. I didn't know that until, like, last year. You know? Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lie. But like, I just feel like you need some kind of escape. And I remember in high school, all my friends and, and even in college would have these like insane houses. And I felt like, oh my God, like I want, I'm, go- I'm going to have that. My daughter will have that. Do you, having been an only child, do you want to have one or multiple? Multiple without even a question. Yeah, you? me too. Like, uh, like, like three, wouldn't, three. wouldn't put anyone through what we so went through. Did you not? <laughs> so you're, I think, oh, the other similarity we have is that both our parents got divorced young. Okay. So. Congrats. <laughs> congrats to us. <laughs> but your parents have a good relationship? <laughs> They're really, really close. Yeah. How? Why? Why are they so close? 
Um, because they got divorced when I was two and they didn't work out romantically, but they decided to like separate, compartmentalize the romance versus like family and being parenting and raising their only imperfect daughter. So they really made it like an active effort. They like literally lived a block away from each other. Oh, I'd go oh, Monday, dad, like, Tuesday, mom, Wednesday, oh, dad. Oh, like that. Yeah. And they re- and they got along and they did it. See, that's a that's a that's an impress that's a rare feat though. Just so you know, from from a divorced parent standpoint, to like have that a that level of like communication and it wasn't always perfect. Well, I'm sure, but there was a lot of effort made. But even to live like a block away from each other, so that oh, you yeah. can like all so you were alternating days. Days. Oh wow. I too have everything. <laughs> yeah, I know that. See, that's the best part. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I think you have to. I mean, I don't know. I think I was lucky that they they just weren't compatible, but they were very supportive of one another. But like they put me first. If they were talking shit about each other, then like I would just absorb that. And like it's my parents. They're both my parents. So I don't see how that like help would help the situation. Did they ever remarry? No. And I've been tra- I want to parent trap them so fucking bad. And then I have like a oh. sister, like a long lost twin. See the parent trap. Actually, I probably parent trap was literally my favorite. <laughs> Parent Trap is my favorite movie of all time. Not I, even no, like actually my favorite movie. I think I've I watched mean, it easily. Obviously, it's our fantasy come to life. I know. Fuck. <sighs> it's okay. Do you think you can Parent Trap them? Like, you think you could do it? I've tried. It didn't work? No, not I, yet. You actually tried? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like, tell me how you tried. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't do that. They're very private. But no, no, no. They're not getting back together. But I think that that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It really didn't work. Um, that's okay because I think that that's the thing. Like as a society, we believe that success is marriage and together forever and happy forever. And let's be fucking honest. No. Like when someone gets divorced, I'm gonna like, congratulations. And they're like, why? I said it to my Uber driver the other day. He told me he's recently single. I have his number if you guys want to go on a date with him. Hi, Jesus Christ, you love this fucking story. So I literally get back from a flight and it got delayed and I had a date that night. So I like called the Uber and I jump in. I bring my entire suitcase into the into the back with me. And I was like, whatever you do, don't look back here. I need to change. I need to do my glam. Just like fucking get to the date, please. Obviously, I said it very nicely. No, and course. he was like, wait. He was like, I've done 2,000, 20, sorry, 20,000 rides. This is the first time I've had anyone go straight from the airport to a date. And I was like, "We mu- you just must not know who I am. <laughs> like, time's a ticking. Like, the guy was like, are you sure you want to still go on the date? I'm like, I'm sorry. I just lost an entire day to JetBlue. You think I'm going to not go on this fucking date? Sorry, I don't know how we got here, but I really, I felt really strongly to share that story with you. Wait, and you pulled up with the suitcase and everything? Everything. That's yeah. Bad. That's badass as fuck. Why? Why? What do you mean, why? It's a suitcase. It's like a handbag with no, meals. No, like, I don't know. I've never pulled up to a date with a suitcase. But, like, I but respect why? it. Why? Because... Because usually, it, I guess my flights are on time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but let's say they weren't. Let's say you were late. Then I would. Then you would. 100%. Oh, I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm just saying I haven't. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's like... It's funny. You're not the first person to ask me. Being like, Dude, you brought the suitcase to the date? No. Like, my presence I is would. the motherfucking present. Oh, And the suitcase, sure. too. <laughs> it's an away suitcase, you better, okay? You better have carried it. Uh, of course. Of course. He did. I don't know how we got here. Because you want to be a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'd be going on those dates. <laughs> Straight from the airport. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. No, but I really, I want to make movies. I always wanted to. And then I got sidetracked with, you know, fucking and yeah. dating and card games and social, which is amazing. It's a great platform. But like, that's the next iteration is to be behind the camera. Are you allowed to share any details about the movie that you're writing? It's a rom-com. Mm. That's it. Mm. Are you going to star in it? You know, I don't think so. Come because on. I want the... Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. I'm star in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I want the... I want it to be the best film. And I don't know if I would be the best actress for the role. I mean, maybe not as the protagonist. Maybe as like the funny waitress bitch the uber driver hey bitch uh, you go to the airport <laughs> so you go to the date <laughs> yeah i'll probably write that in there no but everything is so autobiographical it's crazy like who knows maybe this will be on there coming soon i'm curious the kind of mother you would be and i'm about to comment you again this this three comments this is way too many comments 
I think you'd be a fantastic mother. Genuinely. <laughs> Why? Because I think that you would do a – I know, like, we joke about, like, a lot of things. But I think that all of the core values, I think – you have or you have and you i think would instill in uh a future human in the right ways and i think that you're like probably your experience and you're meeting different people and like just understanding what the balance of emotions stuff like that i think is it's shocking how unregulated a lot of people and and kids especially growing up in this generation like it's hard like it's genuinely hard with all the stimulation to to have your head on straight so i feel like I feel like that my my ultimate end thesis is I think that you would be a good mother. That's really sweet. Yeah, I'm not gonna put my kid on a leash for sure. You know, those like, <laughs> leashes yeah, like kids are so scary. That's wild. <laughs> so crazy. Yes, I'm not gonna do that. No, I feel like that is my true calling, to be honest. But in due time. And I just can't wait to tell my kids, like, you know who your mom yeah. is. <laughs> Come here. You know who your mother is. <laughs> They're gonna be like on YouTube, like, oh my fucking god, this is crazy bitch. Um, <laughs> but that'll be regulated by then. Um, no, I think like I, yeah, I really appreciate you saying that. That's very sweet. That's does it helpful. does it scare you that potent or how do you gauge the career versus potential one day motherhood and you know losing the plot somewhere in between? Why? I don't know. Well, what's or my do you, do you feel like do you feel like there would be a because then you know at that point you're probably settled down with somebody right. So then God, what is the I brand? Know. What, no idea. What the fuck well, do that's we what do? I'm saying. It's that's like, how we're going in the transition era. <laughs> exactly. I think like I'm fatigued. Like not of necessarily being single because I think it's just like I keep learning about myself and like th through every date and I just find out more and more about what I want. Um, I mean, there's obviously moments like yesterday when I was just like, I'm over it. There's something about Sunday, okay? Like Sunday just like, it's not fun. Sunday is relaxing some... Yeah, no, it is. But sometimes you want to be relaxed with someone else. So I called Talia. <laughs> Shout out Talia. Yeah, we love Talia. So she came over and watched Succession with me. But I think that that's, the, there are obviously some moments, but I think it's just built a lot of strength in myself and actually genuinely being happy alone and not feeling lonely, like really pouring love and like time into friends, which I think are like so underappreciated. Like we just think that like the end all goal is marriage and this one romantic relationship and it's like my friends are like i think my friends are my soulmates a lot of them so do you want to get married a hundred percent the wedding <laughs> oh <laughs> my god oh, i know it's gonna be amazing. no i do i think i do i don't know do you, do you think you could be in a committed relationship for 50 years 50 years oh my god I mean, not gone. hopefully longer. If hopefully I'm longer, hopeful. oh my god, it's gonna be hopefully longer. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. Uh, <laughs> Don't manifest that. Come on. No, no, no I'm not. I, I want to be happy, and I want my partner to be happy. And so, if we can evolve together, and we can really like have a foundation where we're growing, and like you know, we're happy. Like I just find that a lot of couples stay together out of like complacency or fear because they have kids or whatever. Okay, so now I agree a hundred percent. So now that we agree on this, how do you in your eyes get if you were to anticipate those moments, how are you gonna how would you prep to not get complacent in a long term marriage? Oh, me complacent? I don't even I can't even believe I use that word because it's not in my vocabulary. Like I'm not worried about complacent. <laughs> it's more just like What are you worried about? I'm not really worried about anything. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that by the time I meet someone, I'm going to be so sure of who I am. Like, and that's why I'm like really happy I was single for most of my 20s. One year left. Like, who knows? But like, I feel much more grounded in who I am. And so we'll see. But I really, I really don't know. Like, I'm not a girl that like fantasizes about her wedding. I just know it's going to pop the fuck off. On a scale of one to a hundred, where do you feel like you're at in terms of knowing yourself? I don't think you ever stop. I don't know. Some people feel like they. I def. I mean, I, I think in the last year, I feel. I mean, I said I'm serene. I'm not just SFK. Like that's major. Oh, Jesus Huge. Christ! I I feel it's just a constant evolution. But I de I don't know. Like I, we're getting there. I'm feeling it. I feel like cooking. When do you actively feel it? When do you actively feel like you're getting to know yourself better? I think therapy is really major and really like. I've been in therapy since I was seven. 
my parents were like, this one's <laughs> fucked this one's up. This fucked up. <laughs> no. We got to get her quick. No, literally. <laughs> um, actually, though. So I, I've been forever. So I was always like, and I love it. And I go every week. And like, it's just something that, I mean, I love talking about myself. So like, please, 45 <laughs> minutes. It's not enough time. It's not enough time. But but it's weird because it's like as much as I thought I was making progress, it wasn't really until I actually delved deep. And I'm not going to sh- share this on here. That could be for our date that you're going to obviously ask me. Yeah, about. yeah. Um, but like really diving into actual like traumatic things that happened to you as a kid. And it's everyone has it. I'm, you know, nothing terrible, terrible happened to me <laughs> on the scale of terrible. But like you really you think that you're self-aware and you go to therapy but it's like not until I really dealt with like painful memories that I was able to like unlock a a version of myself that I really understood more that I have this protective shell for a reason and that I am soft on the inside and to embrace that side of myself like that was something I really learned through there so I I couldn't recommend it more and for and I imagine correct me if I'm wrong that even just being able to be you know fluffy Serena and completely let the guard down has to feel good because I can imagine at times it gets, you know, we joke about it, but like it's it's a it's a it's a lot to it's a lot of expectation. I feel like, no, to be SFK. Yeah, yeah, it's a full time fucking job. <laughs> yeah, it's, a it's, great it's, job. it's being on. Right, it's being and on. it's nice to not be on. Other than therapy, when do you feel like you don't have to be on with my friends? With your friends, like oh, my family, and with some men. <laughs> Why are you smiling? <laughs> Just some that are hand selected with time. What is, what are signs that you look for in men or or women that make you feel like you can actually be the vulnerable or 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 Serena? I don't know if it's something that I'm like looking for. If it's not just like a feeling, like it's very intuitive, but. It's interesting because this came up where I was dating someone and I couldn't tell. So, and it, and I, the guard would go up and then it would go down. And I couldn't tell if it was like I had an intuition that maybe he wasn't, I didn't feel fully comfortable around him, or if I was just being paranoid and like projecting this idea like it's not safe, it's not safe. Like, what was it? And it's kind of a mind fuck, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like a trust thing. And I think that that just grows with time. I think it's just a feeling and it's just like, it's really, I, let me put it this way. I actually think there are probably so many men that I could be myself with, but it's it's about me feeling self-conscious. It's not about anything that they do, right. unless like they're a dick and there are plenty. Mm-hmm. But I think it's more just like I get in my head and then I just turn on SFK. So it's really about stopping myself and being like, just be, your, just be yourself. <laughs> have, you fa- <laughs> have you found that when you're, do you find yourself giving advice to a lot of people? Like directly giving advice? Every day, which is funny. Why? Coaches don't play. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, are you sure you want to play (laughs) me? No, I'm really good. I'm really good at seeing someone else and fixing them. Have you felt that you've been able to instill this level of um, confidence, if you will, successfully in other people? I know I have. What, is there one story without sharing names of somebody that you feel like you're really able to like, you're, you're, you're proud and you're proud of the work you did, but also the work they did to get to, to where they are. So during the, the pandemic, I was a confidence coach. Like I literally was like, I just had so many, I mean, I get DM'd every single day, like tons of questions and, and I had just quit my job. So I was broke. It was locked down. <laughs> it was like, what am I going to do? Life is going great. Life is perfect. Uh, baking banana bread, like mm. the whole thing. And I was like, okay, maybe there's a way to monetize this advice giving. And I'm not, I'm like, I'm not claiming to be a therapist or a life coach. I'm literally not fucking certified. I'm just I'm like, just me. I'm just me. Like, and I coached 150 women that year. Wow. Like aging, Only women? Only women, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I think it's interesting is your, the advice you give. There have been men that have okay, said, okay. I just want to make sure. But, but you know, a one-on-one session with me. I, yeah, it's intimidating. Right. For especially for guys, they think, if for them, it's the ego, right? Right. Because then they're like, oh, like, a, they, they're a woman, a woman's teaching me confidence. Right. I'm confident. That's the issue. Right. Sorry. Continue. No, no, no. Um, but 
like age like the ages were like from 14 to 60 and that's when I realized like and every you know woman would come on or girl or like be like you know thinking that their problem was so unique to them Mm -hmm. and I'm like no bitch like (laughs) no no one's unique we we are all the same like it's all that thing about feeling infected or really self-conscious about what other people would think when literally no one is thinks about you like no one cares no one one gives a fuck and if they do care about you or something it's usually about them they're just projecting you trigger something in them right and it's not to say that you can't grow and like I, you know, you have people in your life that guide you. But I think that the women that I really was able to stay, it wasn't like a one-off session, but like was able to stay with them for months and seeing their just like how simple things that I told them to do, like never speak badly about yourself. Like you're allowed to say feeling like I don't feel great right now or like Feelings go away. They're temporary. But when you say, I am this, like, I'm fucking hilarious or I'm fucking ugly. Like, when people say that or like, oh, my God, when they're on a Zoom and they're like, oh, my God, like, I look so bad. I'm like, you don't. But now I think you do. You know, Mm -hmm. you literally set the tone of your life, like, of who you are, your identity. You're building that with words. So I think that the first step to confidence is just, like, removing I am with anything negative. Because you, if your friend came in the room, you wouldn't speak badly about them. Right. So you don't speak badly about yourself. Do you did you notice that the issues that say the fourteen year old girls were having were similar or different than the ones in the six year old women? I mean, yeah, to some degree, it's just feeling like they're inadequate or they're not good enough. Or you know, I remember one woman, her she had three daughters, put them all through college. Her husband cheated on her and then died. And then she literally looked on the Zoom and she goes, "I've done nothing with my life." And I was like, "I'm sorry, what?" Like you got through heartbreak, heartbreak again, death, having to send all your daughters through college. Like I'm like, we need to, we need to rewrite this narrative. I think that's really what it is. It's rewriting a narrative for yourself. Like when a guy rejects me, is it because I, is it a reflection of me or is it a reflection that he didn't maybe like me that much? And that's okay. I don't know why. I mean, either. (laughs) How, how do you, but I think there takes obviously like, yes, confidence, but there takes a level of um, self-awareness that I think for a lot of people it's difficult to achieve in terms of understanding that the rejection part usually is not about yourself. Right. Like how do you how do you explain that to somebody from as as somebody that feels like I feel like you have a good grasp on understanding that concept? It's just like, do you like everyone? Like, do you? I don't, and <laughs> I don't. You know, like I did a dating show during the pandemic. I did fifty guys. I didn't like any of them really. <laughs> Sorry, I had to think about that for a second, but I didn't. But does that reflect that they're not good looking, mm-hmm. amazing? Like I'm friends with a lot of them, but like they just weren't for me. It's just this feeling that you have. And so I think it's that's the same thing that happens. Like sometimes people just don't feel it, mm-hmm. but it's not a reflection of you. And also you want to know, like you, I want to know. If someone doesn't like me, just tell me now so I can move on. The worst thing is not knowing, I think. Yeah. And it takes time. But I don't like being dicked around, you know? And guys are actually pretty, like, they they tell me pretty quickly if they're not into it. Like, they, I don't get ghosted often. I got ghosted once, and I, I could not believe it. I can't believe people actually do this. Do you guys ghost? No. There's three men in this room. I really, I, I, Brandon definitely not. doesn't. You're I get, I, I'm the reverse of that. I'm the ghosty. Oh, no. really? Yeah. Iced. <laughs> Walter's married. <laughs> Good. Wouldn't ghost your wife. <laughs> do you ghost? Better not. No, I don't. Never have, honestly. When I got ghosted, I literally could not believe. Yeah. Like it just it, it's just a respect like as a human. It's for me, so awful. That's really all it's it comes to. It's just like to. it just the agency to it just, it's it's whack. Where were we? I forgot. I just got so heated thinking about that. Did you ever say anything to this individual? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you ripped him a new one? Oh, hundred percent. On TikTok, which I stopped doing by the way. I stopped doing. I stopped doing did, that. Did he ever respond to the I mean, he obviously saw it, but it wasn't like, I don't think it was, oh no, we might've said his name. I stopped doing that. This was like a couple of years ago. I matured. Not using my platform as <clears throat> revenge or vindictiveness. Um, but <laughs> then I did see him on the street and he like waved no and I literally just looked at him and I just kept walking. I was like, I'm sorry, was that a ghost? Oh. Hmm. I think so. I just find it super rude and crazy. Don't ghost guys. I've gotten a lot of anti-ghost texts. I can, ha- I'm happy to read you one. Wait, read me an anti-ghost okay. text. No, they're really good. I, actually, no, I, oh, this is great. 
I have a question for you. I've Please. gotten this exact one like more than once. Okay. To a point where I'm like, why? And in the moment, it, it doesn't feel so good. Um, <laughs> okay. In the spirit of upfront honesty, I've had a great time at dinner um, and catching up these last couple of weeks. This was kind of like rekindling, but whatever. You're awesome, so funny and hot, parentheses, obviously, and doing amazing things. I'm just not feeling a romantic connection. And as much fun as I'm sure we'd have on another date, I don't want to lead you on. Does that, is that more heartbreaking than anything? Because it's like nicely said. Okay, what does it mean to not feel a romantic connection? Yeah, also. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt like we had we had one. But we're like Okay, you know what it make it, what it makes me think is clearly like his he's not understanding the goods. You know what I mean? You got to that I think but that's he just listed them out. He's maybe seeing, or he's seeing it. He's seeing the goods on a surface level. Right. That's just my take. Is I think if somebody's, he's seeing like the surface level. Oh, you're hot. You're funny. You're this. Right. Right. Which okay, good. Like you know, you have eyes and you have a pulse and stuff like that. But you don't. But if you're not understanding like what I'm bringing to the table on that level, then you're not the right one. A hundred percent. Super surface level. Surface level. So in that sense, it appears to me that this individual probably just doesn't either his either his values are, are just completely different in terms of what he views as a romantic connection or he's just not seeing what he's just not seeing what he has and therefore he should get the fuck out anyways so it didn't heartbreak me at all so it didn't heartbreak <laughs> it didn't break for like my heart. a few hours <laughs> a few hours there was like that's a, a night because that's a that's a sometimes the nice texts are the hardest ones this is the thing it actually was a, a defining moment in my romantic career because uh, it feels like a career at this okay. point. <laughs> it was the realization that we had not gone on enough dates for me to have cared as deeply as I did. And I really... How many dates? Like, not that many. Um, no, no. no. Like, <laughs> are we talking two or are we talking ten? Talking one. <laughs> okay, but, 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 like, there was a lot of talking, which I hate the talking career. There's a lot of talking. But we also like we knew each other in elementary school, and so there was a lot of buildup of like I'm a really good storyteller. Like to my fault, mm -hmm. like I tell the story. I'm like, oh my god, this is such a great movie. Mm -hmm. This is the rom com, and I've like that was like the moment where I was like, first of all, one date? Are you fucking kidding? Like I don't care if I met you if I knew when I was like ten, you know. But I was like, oh my god, he saw me through every ugly stage of my life. Like that's so sweet. Well, also like. Okay, do you believe that in one date? No. <laughs> I don't even, I, no. Did you feel like there was a romantic connection? Yes. Of course. But that, <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, what does it mean? What does a romantic connection mean? Like, what does right, it mean? So you answer it. I thought there was definitely potential for another date. But I don't know. Like, we didn't scratch the surface, but there was enough attraction there and like good vibes, I thought. But I also think. What do you consider a good date? Um, just a flow and like a ping pong, like kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> um, funny, laughing, lots of laughing. And this desire to open up and be vulnerable, but be genuinely interested in the other person. I guess this isn't really good ping pong because I'm not asking you a lot about yourself. Well, but also that's, we're on camera and there's a lot of... And this isn't a date, yeah. but I'm just saying. Um, but I feel like it's just a flow and it's... But it's light. In the beginning, it is light. How do you deem if there's a romantic connection? It's just a gut. gut instinct. But obviously, I don't know. Like, what is... Like, looking back now, yeah, maybe he, he definitely wasn't my guy. Like, there was things that he said that, it, you know, I was overlooking because I was so mm. excited about this narrative that I was writing. But I've learned, like, okay, write the narrative for the movie. Like, I have the right, movie. Right, But not for the life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so good. Like, I... Like, I can get people around me to get really excited because I'm really good at, and I'm, I'm not lying. I'm just like, I'm very good with Energy. articulating a very exciting story. So I'm more obsessed with the story than the person. So dating, okay. it takes so long. Like, oh my God. 
Like I'm learning that for real, for real. Like it actually takes such a long time to get to know someone. I realized something recently that I want to share. Oh my God, please. That the better you feel, or this is for me personally from a past experience, the more certain you are that this is the right person, slow it down a hundred times. Right. Because I like in the past, there was an instance that I, that it went so fast because mm-hmm. I'm like, this is done easy romantic connection. Done, 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 done. Checking every boxes, right. checking every box. But then if it really does check every box, then slow it, like there's no rush, go slower because it's going to happen. I'm like, I was the queen of the cra- like right up and burn, crashed, burn. Uh, yeah, it just, it, it, it does take a while, especially for me too. And I think that that's, that happens a lot for me, like a lot. Because Why do you I, think especially for you? Because I, the majority of the dates I go on aren't going to be through dating apps, like unfortunately, like they are. And so then there's a real preconceived notion about who I am. Do most of these men do their research beforehand and yeah. Do you? You yeah. go on it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you do like the the basics. But so what I is think, the basics for dating? Not for when I'm on your podcast. Um, the you probably go through socials, you know, a Google, you could, a LinkedIn. You could, you could throw a little Google and a LinkedIn there. Eh, LinkedIn may, might be pushing it. Okay, but in a weird way, I kind of like just knowing like the basics, but not too much. That's that's the whole reason why you're going on the date now. Yes, a hundred percent. I'm. I love a blind date. Obsessed. Have you ever been on a, on a true so, blind date? Oh yes, many times. I welcome it with open arms. See, I, I think this would be more people need to be doing this. Mm-hmm. How was your blind date experience? Well, when I did the dating show during the pandemic, mm-hmm. it was they were all blind. It was all blind. Okay. All blind. And then, but I've done it since. I really like it. I, I think that you go in way with way too much information. Like you shouldn't go in with yeah. so much information. You should go in with an open mind. And I really, really try to have that. And because that's also what I expect. I recently matched with someone and they're like, I have to ask you, like, what do you do for work? It seems like you're a dating connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not. Um, but I was like, you know, the same way that like actors play a role, like I play a role in my social media. It was like the way I could say right. it. I was like, I just, but it's it, it's a difficult thing for me to navigate. So I prefer blind, so I can dazzle them without them knowing anything. But do, yeah. Well, I guess a true a true blind date would mean that they also don't know who you are. Right. But also at the same time, like my person like isn't gonna give a fuck. They're gonna get it. Right. No. Yeah. I think that that's it too. And people typically like I would have noticed is like the investment banker bro. Like obviously no shade we love. <laughs> like they don't get it. What don't they get? They just don't get there's like a duality or there's like someone mm. on social that isn't the same person in real life. Like they don't understand that. And I know I'm making a massive generalization, but I have a lot of experience in this area. <laughs> I find that people that are like in our industry or like, you know, actors or like in the creative spaces, mm. they they understand. All right. To wrap things up, because unfortunately we have to wrap things up. Okay. I, we could talk for hours. I know. We really could. Manifest for me real quick. We're in the transition era when you'll come back on in year, two years, let's say, even though you don't think about it in, in necessarily in those time sets or time frames. Mm-hmm. What do we, what do we hope the brand is looking like? What do we hope the personal, where are you at personally? Are we Serena? Are we Serena fucking care again? Are we something, someone else? I don't know. Maybe I have a different last name. What if you chucked in like a little something new, like throw everybody off? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Why is, you really love like? me playing like God, like Man, future? Are you, are you not? No, I am. Okay, so why why, why would you say that? <laughs> what does my life look like? I mean, I'm gonna be on television Manifest for it. sure. No, I am. Uh, I'll be on a streamer, and I'll have sold my movie or making my movie. Two years, yeah. And I'll be in a relationship in two years, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Where are you going to find this human? I don't know. I guess mm. we're going to have to find out. I guess people are going to have to stay tuned. I'll, I'll bring him to the pod. <laughs> oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> sit on my lap. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's the case. But I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm really, you, if you had this conversation with me a year ago, I would tell you exactly what I have lined up. I think I'm really, like, okay with being in a, 
period of uncertainty. I'm welcoming that. And it's so uncomfortable for yeah. me. But I'm really trying to. Well, I'm rooting for you. Thank you so much. Always. This was uh, great. This was awesome. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. Thank you, Brandon, for setting it up. Um, and uh, and by the way, you guys made me feel really safe in this room. Good. That That is important. Jokes aside, that is important. Yeah, it is. Um, where can people find everything? Oh, you know what I have? What do you have? You know what I have. Is it the condom with my face on it? No. Okay. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> can I see that? All right, we could zoom it in with the editing yeah. Let's later. zoom. Let's zoom it in. Should we play one? Yeah. Which one? I just opened it yesterday to take a look. I wanted to open it live with you, but I didn't. I'm glad was, that you didn't. Honestly, too, I was just too, too eager, too enthralled in the conversation. <sighs> All right, which one? <sighs> I get to pick. Yeah. Let's do it. So. Um, the yellow ones are like the more intense ones. Okay, so Bobby's already doing the yellow ones. <laughs> I don't okay. know, because they're the home run. It's really intense. You take a I, look and tell me. You nervous? Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll skip on that one for, for the That's bottom. what I'm telling you. I think you're... <laughs> okay. This is good. Describe me in three words. Oh my God, you, okay. Um, it's a little hard. Well, no, it's not really hard. I'm pretty perceptive. Okay, let's see. I think you're very curious, which I think is fantastic. Um, I think you have a great sense of humor. Thank you. Do you like what I'm saying so far? You're, you're doing so well, Serena. Yeah, and I think you're very um, confident in who you are. Thank you. That's a big, that's a huge comp compliment coming from you. Yeah, major. Okay, describe you in three words. Hit me. I'm not going to copy any of the ones you said. Good, because everyone says confident. I hate, I hate it's that so, shit. Yeah, me so, too. Oh, sorry. You're fine. Playing Budsy, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just so nervous. Um, very self-aware. grounded and hmm. wise wow that's really nice i'm there sure if go. i let you talk more i'd probably say that about you too but <laughs> it is, is about me today but it's, it's about you that's it's really all sweet. about you so anyways Thank you so much again for seriously coming out. Yeah, of course. Such a pleasure. Yeah. People can find you everywhere. At, Serena Kerrigan. They can buy this card game that we just played. Let's these, fucking these, these other ones were, we couldn't do that on the pod. Not on the pod. Not on the pod. Um, <laughs> but it's great to play on a date. It, I, I, I don't doubt it. Serena fucking Kerrigan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, Follow me on Instagram at Felix.Levine. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment.